Well, hello there, party people. I've been expecting you. So welcome to the greatest show on earth. I'm your king of the case and star of the show host Real Justice, and I hope you enjoyed part one of this two-part mini-series. That part one music trailer that you just watched. It took me over 100 fucking hours to make, so I hope you liked the video. And in this worldwide award-winning video that you're about to watch, I examined the possibility of Shannon and the kids being taken to a safe house before they were cold-bloodily murdered. So let's get into it. When Nicole Atkinson secretly returned to Chris's house on Monday, August 13th at 4.25 p.m., she deliberately arrived from a direction that she knew Nosy Nate's camera would not capture, because no one was supposed to know that she went back to secretly talk to Chris. She also parked in the same spot where Chris was parking Shannon's car while Shannon was in North Carolina. The other thing that was odd is why she was gone. He kept parking his truck and her car over here. And I used to see him walk out of his house he right here. He took the car out of the garage? Oh, the car was parked over there for a long time. Like a couple days. This was past weekend? Uh, no. This is also the same spot where Chris parked his work truck on August 14th. When the cops returned to Chris's house, Chris was outside. Chris told Officer James that he was going for a walk in the neighborhood. But was Chris really just going to walk down to secretly talk to Nicole? Or was Chris going to walk over to Christian's house? Like you don't plan on going any anywhere, right? No, I was just going to walk around the neighborhood just to uh, clear my head. Yeah. You never heard about Christian before, have you? Well, if Christian lives down that way. Well, now you have. Shannon's friend Christian lived at 6323 Steeple Rock Drive. Did Chris take the kids to 6323 Steeple Rock at 11.25 p.m. Sunday night? And did the neighbors at 6331 Steeple Rock see a man walking down the street with two kids at 11.25 p.m.? And is Christian really Shannon's friend? Or was she actually Chris's friend? Coder is just playing with Chris's mind here. Because there is no other people outside needing to be shuffled to another interview room. We'll have everyone else. Um, I'm just going to keep it turned for a little bit longer. So just shuffle people through the other rooms. Right. However, this following coder statement appears to be real. People coming in, you know, from your neighborhood. Somebody saw something. Somebody knows where these kids are. And I keep... So did the people at 6331 Steeple Rock see something? Are these the people that Coder was referring to from the neighborhood that saw something? Coder told Chris that someone knows where the kids were. Chris got off the phone with Nicole Kessinger at 11.19 p.m. He then read Shannon's text message and replied to her at 11.21 p.m. Then at 11.25 p.m., Nate's camera is triggered because Chris went outside and walked the gap between his garage and the tree which caused Nate's camera to start recording. Nate's security camera menu shows that his camera was triggered at 11.25 p.m. Sunday night, but Nate never plays the clip when Coonrod was at Nate's house, so we never see what was on the saved 11.25 p.m. video. Coder told Chris that people from the neighborhood were coming in and that someone saw something and knew where the kids were. At 4 p.m. on Monday, the police went to 6331 Steeple Rock regarding Shannon's police incident number 6141. And it was Officer Coonrod who went to 6331 Steeple Rock Drive. So the information Coonrod received from 6331 Steeple Rock, or the fact that Baumhover's SUV door was opened by someone, is the reason Coonrod went back to Chris's house, and this time with backup cops assisting. 
6331 Steeple Rock, is two doors down from 6323 Steeple Rock, where Shannon's friend Christian lived. So did Chris take the kids to 6323 Steeple Rock on Sunday night at 11.25 p.m.? Chris told the three cops that returned to his house that Shannon said she was going to a friend's house to be with the kids. Well, if the kids were taken to Shannon's friend's house at 6323 Steeple Rock at 11.25 p.m. Sunday night, and if Shannon was taken there after getting off of the plane, then Shannon did in fact go to a friend's house to be with the kids, just like Chris said. Listen closely to what Chris told the cops. He said Shannon went to be with the kids. This means the kids were somewhere first, then Shannon went there to be with them. And what was the conversation this morning you guys had? It was about us selling the house and the separation. And how'd she take that? We were both pretty emotional. I was both crying. And then did you see her before you went to work? Did mm -hmm. you say anything to her? Well, she went back, like, well, she told me she was going to go to her friend's house and be with the kids. Chris further said that Shannon was with the kids last night. Then he catches his slip up. And she had the kids with her last night? Yes. Or you had the kids? Oh, well, I had the kids, like, all weekend. Okay. And she had the kids with her last night? Yes. Or you had the kids? Oh, I had the kids. Shannon is never seen getting out of Nicole's car at 1.48 a.m., nor is Shannon seen walking the gap between the tree and Chris's garage. And the reason Shannon is never seen is because she never got out of Nicole's car at 1.48 a.m. As you can see, Nicole's car headlight movement in Nate's 1.48 a.m. video do not match the headlight movement in the doorbell video. The reason they do not match is because the doorbell video is not from August 13th. What you are seeing in Nate's 1.48 a.m. video is Nicole's car turning left off of Steeple Rock and onto Saratoga Trail. The car does not stop long enough for anyone to even get out of the car. Plus, Shannon had to get her luggage out of the car back seat or trunk, and Nicole said she hugged Shannon goodnight. I gotta tell you, that sounds like a load of horseshit, uh -huh. man. Baumhover's police report states that he saw a doorbell video of Shannon walking to the house from the street, yet the doorbell video shows Nicole's car backing out of the driveway. There is no chance Shannon would let Nicole pull into the driveway because it would wake the kids up, and Shannon was tired and needed to get to sleep because she was getting up in three hours. In the car, she said, um, it's going to really suck to get up in three hours. Furthermore, in this doorbell video, Shannon is using guest luggage. There is a big G on the side of the luggage that is facing away from Shannon's body. There is a white name tag that faces forward as Shannon walks. Inside the house, the luggage is found endwise, not lengthwise, against the wall. The G on the side of the luggage is facing the staircase, and the white name tag on top is facing the wall. Because the G is facing the staircase, the white name tag on top must face the living room, not the wall. However, the white name tag is not facing the living room, it's facing the wall. And the G on the side of the luggage is facing the staircase when it should be facing the hallway to the kitchen. This proves that the luggage in the doorbell video is not the same luggage in the house. It proves the doorbell video is not from August 13th, and if the doorbell video really were from August 13th, it proves the luggage in the house was planted. Again, in the doorbell video, the G faces away from Shannon's body, and the white name tag faces forward. So, in the house, the G would face the hallway toward to the kitchen, and the white name tag would face the wall. But this isn't the case. The G is facing the staircase, and the white name tag faces the wall. This killer clue proves the luggage in the house isn't the same luggage in the doorbell video. So was Shannon taken to 6323 Steeple Rock Drive after getting off of the plane instead of being taken home? 
Nicole went to Chris's house Tuesday morning to do her media interview on the street. She parked her car in front of Chris's house. But where was her son Nick? Nicole's Live 360 Maps works off of both her car Bluetooth and her cell phone. But did Nicole have more than one cell phone? Cop cam video shows Nicole has a phone in her hand when she was at Chris's house on Tuesday. Since her car is parked in front of Chris's house, and since she had a cell phone with her in her hand, why does her Live 360 map show her car, or a cell phone, at 6323 Steeple Rock at the very same time that her car and a cell phone are at Chris's house at 2825 Saratoga Trail? It's possible that Nicole had more than one cell phone, and it's possible that Nick had one of Nicole's phones with him. And it's possible that Nick was at 6323 Steeple Rock with one of Nicole's cell phones, while Nicole was at Chris's house doing her media interviews. This is so because the Life 360 map shows her car or a phone near 6323 Steeple Rock between 11.38 a.m. and 12.26 p.m. Tuesday, August 14th and Nicole was at Chris's house during this time period. And Nicole told the cop that the Life 360 maps were for both her and for Nick. Therefore, it appears Nick was at 6323 Steeple Rock with one of Nicole's cell phones that was connected to the Life 360 map system, while Nicole was at Chris's house doing the media interview. When Nicole is seen leaving Chris's house at 12.26 p.m. on Tuesday, it's interesting to see that she doesn't drive in front of Nate's house, like she did after allegedly dropping Shannon off at 1.48 a.m. No. Here, Nicole backs up and drives off up Steeple Rock Drive, because she knows what direction she must travel to leave the neighborhood. So why would Nicole back out of Shannon's driveway in the wrong direction? and drive in front of Nate's house at 1.48 a.m. when this is not the direction you travel to leave the neighborhood. Clearly Nicole wanted to be seen driving by on Nate's camera at 1.48 a.m., just like Chris sat in his truck and waited for Betty to leave because Chris wanted Betty to see him too. Chris and Nicole were setting up eyewitness alibi timelines. So if Nick was at 6323 Steeple Rock at 11.38 a.m. to 12.26 p.m. on Tuesday, while Nicole was at Chris's house doing her media interviews during this same time period, Nicole had to pick Nick up when she left Chris's house at 12.26 p.m. However, when Nicole leaves Chris's house, just by chance, Nate leaves right behind her. So Nicole could not stop and pick Nick up at 6323 Steeple Rock. Otherwise, Nate would have seen Nicole doing so. Clearly, this makes perfect sense. Otherwise, the king of the case wouldn't bring it up, right? So it appears Nicole could not stop and pick Nick up at 1226 p.m. Because Nicole saw Nate's truck was behind her. So Nicole drove home without picking Nick up at 6323 Steeple Rock. Nicole arrived home at 12.53 p.m. Then, at 1.24 p.m., it appears that Nicole went grocery shopping or to McDonald's for one hour, arriving at 1.31 p.m. Then, at 2.32 p.m., Nicole makes a return trip to Steeple Rock. Why? What was the purpose of this return trip? Nicole's Live 360 map shows that Nicole did not stay at the Steeple Rock location long or even turn the car ignition off once there. Otherwise, it would have created another Live 360 map. Since a second Live 360 map was not generated, the Live 360 map that Nicole provided the police shows that Nicole drove to Steeple Rock picked something up without turning the ignition off, then drove back to Firestone. So what did Nicole pick up? Was it Nick that Nicole went to Steeple Rock to pick up? Since Nicole went directly from the grocery store or McDonald's to Steeple Rock, did she drop off food for Shannon and the kids and pick Nick up at the same time? 
The Live 360 maps that Nicole provided the police were only provided to show that Nicole dropped Shannon off at home at 1.48 a.m. Some people claim that Shannon and both kids were only killed on Tuesday, which would mean they were at a safe house somewhere until they were killed on Tuesday. So why did Nicole voluntarily provide police with a Live 360 map alibi for herself and for Nick up to Wednesday morning, August 15th, when no cop asked her to do this? Nick told the police that he and Nicole returned to Nate's house at 4.25 p.m. on Monday to get Nate Shannon's parents' phone number. And then um, Sandy's mom and I mean, not Sandy's mom, Shannon's mom. Sandy? Yeah. Um, called Nikki and asked for uh, Nikki to go back and give uh, the neighbor um, Frank's phone number. Okay. Which uh, we then drove back and did, and um, and then uh, after she did that, um, she came back to the car, and uh, we all got in the car and we left and went home. So why is it Nick or Nicole seen on any cops just camera video walking to, or walking away from, Nate's house between 4:25 and 4:33 p.m.? Why is this visit not mentioned in any police report? Officer Coonrod arrived back at Chris's house at 4.10 p.m., and Officer James arrived at Chris's house at 4.19 p.m., which is before Nicole even arrived at 4.25 p.m. Why does Nate not have any security camera footage of Nick and Nicole arriving at, or leaving his house, during this alleged 4.25 to 4.33 p.m. visit by Nick and Nicole? Officer Coonrod returned to Nate's house at 6.56 p.m. on Monday, and Nate would have told Coonrod about the alleged visit from Nick and Nicole at 4.25 p.m., yet there is no mention of Nick and Nicole's visit to Nate's house in Coonrod's police report. Why not? Because Nick and Nicole's visit to Nate's house at 4.25 p.m. never happened, that's why. It appears that Nicole was one of Chris's occasional side piece lovers, and Chris is seen outside of his house at 4.33 p.m. on Monday, when Officer Bakes shows up to join Coonrod and James. Chris is seen with his cell phone in hand, and it appears Chris texted Nicole to tell her to leave the neighborhood, because as soon as Bakes arrives at 4.33 p.m., both Nicole's live 360 map and James's chest camera video proves Nicole pulls out from her hidey hole at the same 4.33 p.m. time and drives off. In one of the voice messages Nicole Atkinson left for Chris, Nicole says she misses his face, which proves Chris was banging Atkinson. Moreover, Atkinson then told the cop during her police interview that Nicole said to Shannon that she wanted to see Shannon's face. Using the term face with Shannon is the same term she used with Chris when she said she misses his face. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was like, I just want to see your face. She's like, it's okay, I'm so... The voice giggle messages left on Chris's phone matches Nicole's voice to a T. So it was not Nicole Kessinger who left the giggle messages for Chris while Shannon was in North Carolina for six weeks. Hi, Stacey. My name's Nicole, and I'm calling because I'm concerned about um, a friend of mine. Hi. <laughs> it's me. I miss your face. I was just calling to say hi. Call me back. Bye. Hi. <laughs> It's me. <laughs> I guess just call me back when you have a chance. Bye. When Officer Dahl visited Nate on Tuesday morning, Dahl told Nate the police wanted all of Nate's videos up to the point when the officer visited Nate last night. Well, that's no problem. No, I, I just wanted to tell you just just from that uh, the time that it got dropped off until um, the officer like two o'clock to yeah from when and then when the officer came over and talked to you last yeah. night. Well, Last night was Monday, and the cops wanted the video up to the point when Coonrod visited Nate at 6.56 p.m. These video clips, up to 6.56 p.m., 
would include the alleged 4.25 p.m. visit to Nate by Nick and Nicole. However, the discovery proves that there was no visit by Nick and Nicole to Nate at 4.25 p.m. Otherwise, the video clips would be included in the discovery, and they are not, because they do not exist, and they do not exist, because Nick and Nicole never visited Nate at 4.25 p.m. This proves Nicole's return secret trip back to Chris's house at 4.25 p.m., where Nicole arrived in a direction that Nate's camera would not capture was because it appears beyond obvious that Nicole helped Chris with the disappearance of Shannon and she needed to secretly talk to Chris about something. Nicole knew that the police witnessed Nicole drive by Chris at 4.25 p.m. from her secret hidey hole. And she knew that the police knew that Nicole never stopped to ask the police if they had any new news about her missing alleged best friend. This is the very reason why Nicole thought she was going to be charged when the police asked Nicole to do a face-to-face -face interview. Now why would Nicole think she was going to be charged? Charged for what? Since Shannon was only missing at this point. Have a think about it, party people. If Nicole wasn't involved in Shannon's disappearance, it doesn't so shit so Shannon getting out of my car. Once Nicole saw that the police had returned to Chris's house, she obviously would have stopped and asked the police if they had new information. Nicole didn't stop. She drove right on by. Shannon was only missing, and no one, but the killers knew if Shannon and the kids were dead yet. Why did Nicole think Chris strangled Shannon to death? when Shannon was only missing at that point. And, like, if it was a crime of passion, I honestly think to God he'd strangle her. Only because she already has the neck issue. Or does Nicole Kessinger's response make more sense? When Kessinger first found out that Shannon was missing. That's why I gave him the benefit of the doubt for the first day, because I was just like, no way. Like, I didn't even think about that. I mean, murder was not on the top of my mind when somebody doesn't come home for an evening, especially if they've just like had some sort of like heated conversation. It's like, okay, you guys are separating, you have a heated conversation, you leave for a night. Like, I didn't even think this guy killed his wife. So, party people, which Nicole sounds more innocent to you. Atkinson even told the cop that Shannon and Chris were having a boy then nicole caught and corrected her lips slipped past tense and said shannon and chris are and they were having a little boy they are having a little boy by the time nicole did her late night tuesday police interview nicole already knew shannon and the kids were dead it's obvious nicole also falsely said that she pulled her car up to chris's garage door so Nick could stand on the car and look into the window to see if Shannon's car was in the garage. This too is an outright lie. If this truly happened, Nate would have had security camera video of it. He does not, because it did not happen. Not only that, but if it did happen, then Nicole's Life 360 map would have generated a map for this car movement. No map exists. And the only way Nicole knew that dog Dieter was put up, as she told the cop, And the dog was put up, and I don't know if they cage him all the time, was because Nicole was in Chris's house before she called the police. And it was probably Nicole who planted the luggage against the wall with the white name tag facing in the wrong direction. And Nicole only called the police because Cassie and Christina made her call. And Nicole being in Shannon's house would explain exactly how she knew Shannon's car was in the garage, since Nick never stood on Nicole's car and looked in the garage window. And then I told Nicholas, my son, I was like, because the garage panels where you can see in, it was too high for me. I'm like, come look and see for cars in the garage. And he couldn't, so then I backed my car up and pulled it up closer to the garage, and he stood on my hood to look and see, and her car was in the garage. Now, in previous videos, I've already proven beyond any doubt that the FBI clearly made a fake 518 AM video.
is there any reason you would feel uncomfortable to tell me that they were not alive at that point? No. Okay. Could, wasn't it a video or anything? Um, it's hard to see. Okay. And I, and I believe you. I'm not going to discuss those details here. However, no one walks out of Chris's garage before nosy Nate's camera turned on. And Nate's camera only turned on at 5.18 a.m. when Betty's car pulled out from the other side of her garage. Chris is already in his truck when Betty pulls out and when Nate's camera starts recording. So why didn't Nate's camera turn on? when Chris walked from his house to his truck just before 5.18 a.m. Well, it's possible that if Chris walked the kids over to the safe house at 11.25 p.m. Sunday night, he stayed there with them until 5.18 a.m. Then, when Chris walked to his truck from the possible safe house at 6323 Steeple Rock Drive, he never walked the gap between his garage and the tree because he didn't walk from inside his house to his truck on the street. He walked from Steeple Rock to his truck, so this is why it never triggered Nate's camera. However, Nate's camera did in fact turn on at 11.25 p.m. Sunday night, and when Chris possibly took the kids to the safe house. And why does Chris mention Christian to Officer Coonrod? Well, Kristen lives down that way. But then say to the three cops that returned to his house, that he's checked in with all of Shannon's friends, when, in reality, Chris's phone records prove that Chris never did contact Christian. And you can't think of anywhere she'd want to go? She uh, go for walks around here? No, I go for runs. She goes, she doesn't really go for, do anything as far as going for walks or anything. And you've talked to all the friends you guys have around the area? <laughs> Again, Christian lived at 6323 Steeple Rock which is where Nicole's live 360 map shows one of her phones was possibly at between 11.38 a.m. and 12.26 p.m. on Tuesday. It's also where Nicole's car possibly returned to at 2.32 p.m. on Tuesday as well. Since Chris mentioned Christian to Coonrod, well, if Kristen lives down that way. Christian is obviously a friend of Shannon's that you've never heard of before. And since Christian is a friend of Shannon, wouldn't you expect a greater response from Christian when the cops visit her house during the door-to-door -door search for Shannon on Tuesday? A bigger response than just, sorry, we have no camera and no info. What a great friend Christian is, eh? So Christian, why don't you tell my public what you really know about this case? The purpose of this worldwide award-winning miniseries was to leave you with more questions than answers, and, as king of the case, I believe this goal was accomplished. Was Shannon and the kids taken to a safe house? And did Nicole bring Shannon and the kids some food at 2.32 p.m. on Tuesday, or did Nicole bring her occasional side piece lover Chris, a happy meal from McDonald's, and his favorite drink from Starbucks, which might explain the plastic cup found in his kitchen garbage can on Wednesday. We may never know. Christian decided to move shortly after the murders, but I bet she watches YouTube videos on this case. So maybe she'll watch this video, and maybe she'll respond, but I wouldn't count on it. Anyway, thanks for watching Party People. Please give this video a big thumbs up, and please leave some cool comments in the, your word is heard, comment section, and I'll see you in my next worldwide award winning video.